Welcome everybody, I'm John Zadar. This is April 12th, it is Tuesday, and you're watching On Top and Hot. What I do here is I share my DD, or I share some stocks with you that I come across through my trading day. And I've got a few today. They were up there getting high trades. And today was actually slim pickings. Out of 12,000 securities on the OTC market, we had, if we were lucky, 12 stocks go over 100% today. He gets. But I got a couple here that actually have some catalysts that have reason for running and can run some more. So let's go take a look at what I found. No big surprise to anybody, I'm sure. We're over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site whenever I want information on an OTC stock. The SEC and FINRA update this site every single day. So the information I'm looking for is usually right here. So I start here and work out from there. So Google is my second choice, not my first. So we're looking at VIZC, VizConnect, finished today at 0.0016, 60% up on the pink tier, current, got our verified profile and our transfer agent verified. Look for these folks. These are important ticks. We like to see these over here. They also have independent directors. You need these if you want to uplist anywhere to the QB, which is the next tier up from the pink. You've got to audit your financials to get there and be at least one penny. So they'd have to be about eight more times up. Or if they go to the NASDAQ, which is a whole different ball game. In either case, you got to have them. And if you're not going to uplist, you don't need them at all, so why have them on the payroll? So we have a little bit of a heads up there. The company is a shell risk right now. That means they're in business, but they're not reporting any revenues, and that is the case. They have slumped down to zilch, but things are changing. Well, things have changed, and that's what's got it running today. So what does this company do? Absolutely nothing, really. The company ran itself into a hole in the ground and became, well, a shell risk. They couldn't do anything, so there was a major change today, but it wasn't caught by the news presses and it wasn't caught by the disclosures, but it was caught, and I'm going to share that with you here. So what was the relative volume around this company today? <laughs> wow. Normally she does 34 million shares a day. That's not a bad average. Today she did, wow, whoa, 1 billion shares, folks. Holy cow, what is that? That's like 30 times her normal volume. And wow, we're talking about 30 times 34 million. That's impressive. You can see why I'm showing it to you. She had a lot of interest today. What is the share structure on this guy? Oh my God, twice as big as the volume was. 2.5 billion shares ton of shares in there. I don't believe, we'll look, but I don't believe we're going to see anything on the financials. Zero, 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 but notice there are zeros, not dashes. That's how they remained pink current. They're filing. They're letting everybody know. We're not making anything. We got paperwork to prove it. Disclosures. The financials are all caught up, as you would expect. That's how they remain pink current. And SEC filings, this is where we look for 8Ks to see if there's reverse mergers or anything. And they don't have anything here. So let's go check over at the news. Obviously, we need a catalyst because she is running and we got nothing here. So if I can't find a catalyst at the OTC markets, I could go do a Google search. But you know what I find faster? Just running over to Twitter. Look, there are lots and lots of people over there looking at all sorts of places. Now, normally I would just jump into Twitter and scroll and show you what we have, but I needed to get the exact information to show you how this was found and how someone found it. Terry here. Terry found it. He found it over here at Silver Flume website. This is the um, Secretary of State's website for Nevada. Every state has their own websites. Some of them are free, some of them aren't. This one is free for Silver Flume and lots of OTC companies come out of Nevada. So this is where he got his information before it came out in a news press, before it was released on a filing, it has to come out of the court and actually happen. And that's what happened here. You had articles of exchange and articles of conversion that were filed today, 412 by Pharma LLC, with regard to VizConnect, Inc. And you can see inside that form, they tell you that the new entity is Pharma LLC. So you've got a new company here. Now, I went out and did some due diligence on Pharma, and I couldn't come up with anything, literally nothing. I can't share any information with you. There was every kind of Pharma you can imagine. Lead Pharma, Pro Pharma, AID Pharma, but 
no Jets Pharma. So I don't know who they are. I don't know what they're about, but they are the new company now. They are the ones that are in control of this. So I am sure something is going to happen in pharmaceuticals, maybe. But we had, a, well, was this 60% when we looked at it? 50% gains. I'm going to go see if this has actually dropped. You don't normally get a lot of activity on an OTC stock after market, pre market hours, but it can happen, just not by you and me. So let's go see what that chart's showing us right now. So we've jumped over here to Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform I got from TD Ameritrade just for signing up for a free account. You can do exactly the same thing. Just sign up and keep your account open and you can use TOS just like I am. We are looking at BIZC. That is a six month, four hour chart. And I have been playing this stock before, but I am gonna get rid of all of these lines because you know what? None of that matters anymore. It's a new company, right? everything from today back doesn't matter doesn't matter why they jumped why they fell what their old price is worth they're just not going to have anything to do with the future now so let's just come right on into that five day five minute view so the news well if you can call it news the tweet was revealed today that there was court activity showing that a reverse merger is going to be announced it's going to be a news press it's going to be a filing and there's a lot of people that maybe don't have a twitter account that don't get into court documents i mean how would they know most of us don't so once the news press comes out that's probably going to be a whole separate surge on its own from all the people who are outside of the know so we could expect another bounce from this this jump today oh let me see we started down here at geez double zero one how convenient was that she got all the way up here to double zero two which is a hundred percent gains at that point and what was her high right there at that time that was a quarter till 11 right there and she had reached perfectly 100% right there that is a smidge over it's 110% and then she fell all the way back down here and we are left with 50% woo wee so actually we are going to be just a little bit under where I like to take my consideration from the bottom of the surge to the top of the surge and then I find the center and if it keeps half of what it threw on the table, I'm a happy camper. Well, this went up and threw away more than 50%. It's just under it. It's just under it here, but it is further down than I like to see. It did come all the way down. You can see it purposely punched the 200-day SMA and then jump back up. Token sign, I do like to see that. It almost stops it from falling down there sometimes. Just get given that, that tag, it doesn't just keep dripping and dripping and drooping until it finally hits it. And you can see we had a lot of volume at the end of the day. That sell-off was a burst of volume. We had a crossover at the end of the day. MACD is falling hard. RSI is taking a tumble. And my CCI, under the red, obviously a bad sign this is all looking really bad right now but here's the point it just started hasn't even been announced this is twitter activity at best so there was a run today on a couple tweets for a few people when the company pharma llc comes out and says we are now the new owners of the company this is our direction these are our products this is our revenues now that they're going to become public we're going to get information about them so this is <laughs> it's a coin toss we'll call it a coin toss because we know nothing about the company but we do know it's a reverse merger we do know how people like to play these uh ground floor opportunities if you will hoping and speculating for the best people love to speculate so if anything she's come back down to a basically decent price for speculators she gave away a lot of her gains came down very low and then really she's hanging around the 50% mark of her gains right now which is the start of a whole new game so it is best foot forward and she's kept her balance so I like the way she's looking keep our fingers crossed we get a news press real soon 
So now we're taking a look at ticker SNIPF, SNIPF. This is SNIP Interactive, finished a day just under 19 cents and just over 47% gains. She's on the pink tier, she's current, she's got independent directors, which means she has aspirations to uplist at some point in time. You don't need them unless you plan on it, right? But we don't have a verified profile and we don't have a verified transfer agent. And these aren't just for giggles. We really need to see these. These are important things that need to be taken care of. So I would hope this would get taken care of soon. And it's just one more of the question marks about this company. Now, I've looked at a lot of information about this company and I really like a lot of what I see, but there have been question marks that have been popping up. So why am I looking at it? Because a New York Stock Exchange company looked at it and made an investment into it today. And I'm going to share that information with you here in just a minute. So that's why I'm looking at it. Somebody else has already done their due diligence and is making a huge investment into the company. So I thought I'd look at the company. So I'm kind of overlooking the question marks. No verified profile, no verified transfer agent. I'm counting on it being taken care of here soon. So what does SNP Interactive do? Well, they've been doing the same thing for a long time. I guess in a nutshell, easily put, you could say they're into advertising, but specialty advertising, promotions, loyalty. They tell us here that SNP is a global loyalty and promotions company with a singular focus to develop disruptive engagement platforms that generate insights and drive sales. Our solutions include shopper and marketing promotions, loyalty rewards, rebates, and data analytics. And now they've just made a new acquisition as you'll see in the news for a game that helps you create loyalty points that can be cashed in and converted into money that you can use for sports betting and casinos. Yeah, so they've got a lot going on here. It's not just advertising. So they did have news come out today about this New York Stock Exchange company that wants to make this investment into them. So what was the relative volume today's increase? Not very much. That's rather surprising to me. See, I did not find this stock where I normally look for stocks. On my current markets page, which shows me the biggest runners, the stocks that have the most trades, no. I found this in the news. And I looked at the news and I said, well, that sounds like a catalyst to me. Now she did run, she did have some volume increase today and probably is gonna have more. But as I said, there's question marks. And well, maybe that's one there from 59,000 to 93,000 shares. Hmm, not very big. Maybe nobody read the news. What is the share structure on this company? More question marks. Goodness gracious. I normally get the float from the unrestricted shares here, but we got nothing. Nothing there. And I normally don't trust a float because, well, just like that. It's outdated. 2018. I can't trust that. And 141, well, that may very well be it, but how do I really know? So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. By the time this video gets out and you're looking at it, uh, right up there somewhere, there you go. That's, the, that's what the share count is on the float. I went and got it for you so you didn't have to be left out. I don't know what it is yet, but I'll figure it out. Financials. This is where some more question marks come up. I mean, some big question marks. This is all the way back to 2015, 16, 17, and 18. These are annual reports. They're financials, how much they made in a year. You can see they're about $12 million every single year. We know it's millions because they tell us to put three more zeros behind there. So that looks really good. But where's 2019, 20, and 21? So let's come in on the quarterly. Those are normally very current. It's gotten even worse. We have nothing here since 2016, dashes instead of zeros. So it looks as though they're not even filing and there's nothing for 19, 20 or 21, nothing. So it's a little curious why there's nothing going on here and I don't see Shell Risk or Shell Company over here. What makes it even more curious is when you jump over here to the filings. Now, of course, you're gonna look for filings if you want financials. That's where you get your information. But there's nothing current here. The most current annual report is right there, all the way back in 2015, which I did jump into and take a look. They were doing the same business then as they're doing now. They've just made some improvements to now. And they were doing about $3.5 million every quarter, which is really pretty good. And it was steady revenues. But there's nothing here for me to read and there's nothing down here at all. So I had no information here 
for what their financials are? Big question mark. So let's go take a look at that news. Now we've got two packages of news over here. We've got the news that is brought to the OTC market, which is quite outdated. It's all right there and it's all from 2018, all of it. Then you have news that they've imported from online, from Business Wire, Seeking Alpha, Access Wire. Thank God for that. And this is current news, including today's. Oops, you got to see the company, Bailey's Corporation. But I did want you to see up here in their old news, as I said, they've been doing the same business for a long time. And here it is, 2018. Then you got news here for 2022. Well, where is everything in between? Where's the beef, as they would say? I mean, I don't know. I don't see the financials. I don't see the news. But it seems that everything is still continuing, except there's a big bald spot in the financial information. However, the news kind of fills in the blanks. But up here, you can get an idea of the sort of business they were doing. Three-year loyalty agreement with Australia's leading manufacturer of horse feed one month extension order from North America's leading roof manufacturer, extension order from the world's largest CPG company, preferred supplier for the world's largest food and beverage company. In all the news I was reading, they just don't mention the company's names. They don't. They just don't release them. They just tell you they're the world's biggest, the largest. That's all they keep telling us. And then up here is an interesting one. FSD Pharma joins SNP's Cannabis Marketing Resource Center. Now, they tell us that they've been working with CPG, which is consumer product goods, your box goods and stuff like that. That's primarily all they've been working with. But they have expanded tremendously into other areas now, helping their revenues to grow. That's what they say, even though we can't find them. And they were experimenting back then too. Now, when you come into the news right now, this starts right in January. They had a unaudited financial report. We could jump into that one, but they cover it here. So we're going to jump into that one instead. Then they talk about getting this company here. And this is when they closed it in February. SNP closes acquisition of loyalty gaming pioneer Gambit Rewards. Just a quick look in at this. SNP Interactive, a platform as a service company in the global loyalty and promotion sector, is pleased to announce the completion of its acquisition of Gambit Digital Promotions Inc. Gambit is a regulatory approved consumer network that integrates loyalty programs with online gaming and sports betting in America. Gambit operates a proprietary and patent pending platform for turning loyalty points into free to play tokens, which can then be used to participate in various online gaming and live sports betting opportunities. So this is very interesting. You've got advertising, loyalty, tokens and points, which can now be converted not just into buying more goods, but actually being used for your own entertainment, gambling. So that's, that's quite unique. Taking a look back at their news again, it was here just about a week ago, April 7th, SNP delivers record Q1 sales, bookings of over 4.5 million, forecast year-on-year -year revenue growth of over 30% positive EBITDA. Now that's kind of interesting. They're telling us that they're breaking records now. What, what did I say they were doing? About three to $3.5 million a quarter. And now they're telling us they just hit 4.5 million. Well, obviously they've got their filing somewhere. Where are they keeping them? Let's jump into that piece of news. So this came out, as I said, April 7th. We're not going to read all of it, but there's a few key points about the money. For the first time, the company has consummated total sales bookings of over $4.5 million for the first quarter. Outstanding. I'd like to see the disclosures, but great. Over 40% of the bookings in the first quarter came from new industries and markets outside of the traditional consumer packaged goods clients of the company. So they're getting more clients. And what, what did they say it was? 40% new business. They tell us here, and this is great. Bookings backlog at the end of the first quarter stood at over $10 million, an increase of over 30% when compared to the backlog at the end of the first quarter of 2021. That's business waiting to be done. That's business in line. It's, it's huge, folks. So they've got a lot of business here. We can see they are growing. So where's the disclosures? <laughs> 
Then you have today's news. Now this Seeking Alpha one, I'd like to show it to you, but it actually takes you to Seeking Alpha. It's just a couple of bullets, and to be honest, they won't let me go any more there for free. I've been there so many times that I gotta pay to see it, and I just won't pay to see Seeking Alpha. So we've got this extra one they threw in at the end of the day. You can see they both came out today. Thank you very much. So let's take a look at that one. Now they got a ton of information in this and we're not gonna go through it all, but you can see how much is here. So it would definitely be worth your time if you're interested in this company, come over and read this. It's some good information. They tell us here that SNP Interactive Inc. today announced that a subsidiary of Bailey's Corporation has signed an agreement to invest $5 million in SNP. Following completion of the investment, Bailey's is expected to own approximately 9% of the issued and outstanding common shares of SNP. Common shares. Having subscribed for 25 million common shares of SNP at a U.S. price of 20 cents per share. What's the price right now, folks? I saw it just under 20 cents today. We're just under 19 cents right now. That was the drive. In my opinion, that was the drive. Everyone saw that this company saw this was worth at least 20 cents, at least. So they went and bought 25 million shares. So we feel confident to buy it up to 20 cents. So that's my feeling on that. Bailey's and SNP will also enter into commercial agreements whereby Bailey's will become SNP's exclusive gaming partner for SNP's loyalty gaming platform. Recently acquired in connection with SNP's February 22nd, 2022 acquisition. Bailey's will also receive a three year term license of the SNP loyalty program. They're actually going to use the program on their own products. They're not just buying into the company. They're going to use the company's products. Bailey's will be granted an option to license the source code for the specific version or versions of the SNP loyalty software platform actually implemented in any of Bailey's properties for a price of $10 million. So if they don't want, and I don't know what they're paying right now, but they can actually go and buy the option license for $10 million if they want to use this program for all of theirs. So you've got a lot of good information here. As part of the deal, SNP will also license certain free to play games and trademarks from Bailey's for inclusion in the Gambit Rewards platform. Gambit free to play tokens are now available in 48 states. I find that very interesting. As I said, there's a lot of information down here talking about how Bailey's is working with them, how these games, these tokens, and the sports betting all come together. But you can see what the catalyst was now. There was a lot of excitement around the company, but not as much excitement as there could be or should be. Now, I think a disclosure would be really helpful for them. If they're making that kind of money, I would like to see the last annual. That is going to help. So. You've got a company here whose finances are a little questionable, but Bailey's has just invested into them. They're going to be only 9% of the company, and I can assure you, they've done their due diligence. They've looked at everything before they put $5 million into this company and decided to use the product and are willing to pay $10 million somewhere down the road to get permanent use of this platform. So. If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for us. But I'll keep looking for that disclosure. Right now, let's go take a look at that chart. So looking at SNIPF, six month, four hour chart, you can see she was back here at a low in this corner of just over seven cents. She hit a high way up here at the beginning of January at just about 30 cents. So you got a little more than 400% gains there in four months. Then she had a topo down to the 200. Got to remember, the further away you get from the 200, <laughs> the bigger the drop's going to be. Sooner or later, the rubber bands have to come back. It's just an imminent thing. So it came all the way back down, but not before hitting the high. Boy, she was fighting, didn't she? <laughs> Did not want to go down. Went underneath the 200 like a rubber ball in water. <laughs> Boink, boink, boink. And that's what she did. She went underneath the 200, came back up, and then fell down hard. All the way down here. And then today, with that news, she launched all the way back up to the 200. It looks like she's just about at the top of it. And if we zoom in, you can see everything from today has got all the technicals pushing up. Really strong at this moment. Let's come down to that 20-day, one hour. So she's under the 200 by a long shot. 
sitting on the 50 on top, hanging underneath. So just, you know, meandering around the 50 until that news came today. Now it looks like there's no extra volume. The volume looks pretty much the same today as it does any other day. Technicals are strong. She did jump. You got price action out of today. Looking at the five day, five minute. So she's very planted here. She was going sideways riding on the 20 and we just had the 50 come into the picture. Just came in and she had a big fall yesterday. Hit a low bubble and well, you could say she's bouncing off of that low, but it's perfectly synchronized with the news. Now remember, this low bubble is on our five minute time frame. If you go back 10 days, you'll probably still see it there. Yep, still sitting there. But if you go back 20 days, bink, we got a new one here. It's down about 30 cents more. So not a lot of people trade on a one hour chart. They'll look at it. They'll get a panoramic view of what's going on with the stock. But most people are trading down at the five minute, one minute chart. So when you're here, that's the bubble you see. So it's going to draw people's attention who are trading here. So it literally could have gotten some bump out of the low bubble and then have a news on top of it, a rocket. Look at that. First five minutes, she took virtually all of the gains of the day. Second five minutes, she topped off on her high of 20 cents. She started down there at 12. So you had about an 80, 75% gain there roughly. And if we take a measurement from the bottom of that surge to the top of the surge and try to find the center about right there maybe, about there maybe, Okay, yeah, that looks about right. Pretty good at it because I'm looking over here. I'm not trying to line it up. So she went up, came down, bounced off her 50% gain, which is what I expected to do. Not go any lower if it's good. And it bounced off of it and took some more gains. End of the day with 47%. So she looks good right now. She looks strong. She's got new things going on, right? Now, we need a disclosure. We would really like to see a disclosure. If they can come out and show us some annual figures, what they did last year, I would be impressed. I'm sure it's more than 12 million. They've just hit new records. They've got a new company investing into them. They've now got a game program that works with these big companies to help them get loyalty points. People want to come back, play that game to get more tokens to go sports bet or gamble at the casino. So I think it's all good for them right now. It's looking golden. We just need those question marks erased with some answers. And finally, we're taking a look at SPUR, S-P-Y-R, SPUR Inc. Finished the day at 0 0.0575, just under six cents, 38, 39% gains. They're on the middle tier of the QB. That means their financials are all audited. You can count on the numbers being factual and actual, more trustworthy, more transparent. They have a verified profile and a transfer agent, look real good. Got their independent directors, probably used them when they uplisted to the QB from the pink. If they have plans to go to the NASDAQ, they're going to need them then too. They also have a stock promotion going on right now. This means they're paying people to write articles about them. It's not fake news. It's not a pump and dump. They're just articles letting people know who the company is, what they do, plain and simple. And that can definitely help the stock to rise. That's why they do it. So what does this company do? Well, here in their business description, they tell us that Spur Technologies is a technology company that through its subsidiary, Applied Magic X Inc., develops and resells Apple ecosystem compatible products with an emphasis on the growing multi-billion dollar smart home market. Actually, it's just better to show you their site. So basically Applied Magic X has two products for, for the most part. They have a platform program that works in your home and they have one that works in your car. And this is the internet of things. They are connecting things to their programs as much as they can do. As a matter of fact, up here, you can't, can you see that? It says here, plug and play, works wirelessly, works with most cars, supports car steering options, Okay, uh, dictate Siri, find your car in Apple Maps, USB and USB-C compatible, supports iOS 14, made for CarPlay. And I guess when you get an iPhone, it's already built into iPhone, so you don't have to download anything to run this app. And they have them both for the car and for the house. So you take this little device here and you put this into your car. And then your iPhone has to be an iPhone 5 or up when you get into the car, dee 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 dee, 
automatically connects to it and it has everything that you can want you know you've got your music you've got Siri so you can tell it to change stuff or tell it to make a phone call you can do a text by telling Siri to type the text plays your music it does all the stuff that you want it to do and it's backed by Apple right so you've got that and then you've got the one for the house and this is just getting bigger and bigger folks the internet of things is going to touch on to every aspect of your house they're doing as much as they possibly can i mean you initially just think of the electric stuff your air conditioning your heating your lights sure it's going to work with all that it's also going to work with your refrigerator it can work with your router and your internet it can protect all of this stuff run it at top efficiency but it can also be connected to door locks and automatically lock your door let you know if windows are open there are all sorts of things and they are working on it and they're working on it hard right now trying to get as much of that into their app into one place as they possibly can so that's the company's product that is what they do so the company did have news that came out today so what was the relative volume around the company well she normally does 688,000 shares today she did 6.4 million I do believe that is just under a hundred times I think that's like 99 times her normal volume so there was a huge increase today what is their share structure not too bad unrestricted shares is where we get our float we've got 151 million in the float out of 281 million that's not bad no it's not a low float but it's not ridiculous right it's not multiple billions what are her financials well over the last few years uh, up and down from 128,000 to 300,000 up to 2020 let's check our current quarterlies not very good not very good at all so we've got a problem with money right now so we definitely need things to change disclosures we got anything current over here of course their financials are going to be current and sec filing they did have one here at the end of the month and basically this is just telling us that they're late it was actually a late notification I'll let you see that right there it's a real short form right there that's all of it notification of late filing so they are due to put out a 10k their annual financial but they're late right now so let's go take a look at that news now they've got lots of news here and basically all of it wraps around applied magics now applied magics is their only subsidiary now they did have a few other subsidiaries they had um spire actually i think that is spire and not spur <laughs> they had spire apps they had a bunch of online games they got rid of that it is gone they also had another subsidiary called airport inc in pennsylvania not a clue what it was about but it's gone and then they've got one more now that they're burying getting the last five shovelfuls of dirt on it so food company all they have is applied magics and they are working on that with all their focus right now and we've got two pieces of news here that we need to focus in on you have uh, spires announces expansion plans in 2022 you definitely want to see where they're going so let's jump into that one so this came out March 28th Spire Technologies, I do believe it's Spire, not Spur. <laughs> Spire Technologies is a technology company whose subsidiary, Applied Magic X Inc., develops and resells Apple ecosystem compatible products in the growing multi billion dollar Internet of Things, smart home, and connected car markets. Today, they are pleased to announce its acquisition and expansion plans for 2022. The company has been in preliminary discussions with two companies targeted for possible acquisition this year. One company is a well-positioned industrial lighting developer whose business is focused on the marketing and sale of its proprietary lighting technologies, which are widely adopted as the industry standards in the transportation and industrial lighting spaces. The target company has a good track record of revenues and would be a strong fit for the company. The company expects to execute a non-binding letter of intent soon. Not very specific. The second target controls a proprietary web-based software platform and complementary hardware used for high-value asset tracking in the construction, agricultural asset management, police, defense, energy, and cold chain industries. The company believes this acquisition fits well into its Internet of Things division and expects its business to expand the company's holdings 
positively. So we see they have their eye on two companies. We don't know when, but we've got an idea. One is in lighting. I don't know how that plays into the Internet of Things. And then you have the Internet of Things company. And then that last piece of news we need to take a look at. Now, this piece of news came out today, April 12th. Spire Inc. today announces that Applied Magics is exploring AI applications for inclusions into its products. As part of our secret lab initiatives, we didn't touch on to that but just a few months ago they created a new department called secret labs which is going to be creating and inventing new gadgets new things that we're just going to drool over things we're going to get excited about at least that's what they tell us as part of our secret lab initiatives ai frequently comes to the forefront of our product development and how to make smart hardware even smarter for example various sensors track a number of conditions around your house but when processed by an AI system, the analysis of those conditions can be used to trigger actions that can then increase your security or save you money in the long run. You know, right now we've got all these devices, but we set everything and it's set until we change it. AI controls it while you're away. Maybe the house does get too warm or something. I don't know, but the AI is in control. However, even though they tell us up here they're exploring AI applications for inclusions, they tell us that they believe this could be used to help. They also tell us that Applied Magic doesn't discuss future products, even really exciting ones. But keep checking Spire and Applied Magic's websites and press releases for news about developments and products. What a tease! What a bloody tease! They really didn't tell us anything here. I think they're just keeping their name in the news. I don't know. No. But the fact of the matter is, they've got some hot products here. They are coming into a, a new era. We don't see a lot of Internet of Things, but it really is the cusp of everything that's happening. And that's why 5G was really invented. 5G is how things talk to each other. So they've got a lot going on, but they don't have a lot of money coming in. Something's got to bloody well change here soon. They've been doing this for a while and it should start to culminate here. So hopefully we're going to see a news press about, I don't know, something that's actually going to advance their revenues. But today there was some increase and there was some excitement. So let's go look at that chart and see what's up. That is Spire, S-P-Y-R, six-month, four-hour chart. Lots of activity on this chart. I mean, she runs, right? She's down here at three cents, going up to over nine cents. That's a 300% gain. That's a 200% drop. I mean, she is all over the place, and the 200-day SMA cuts right through all of it. So she keeps coming back to it wherever she goes. And today, she launched herself far away from that 200-day. What else I notice is the volume. Look at this area right here. That volume is substantially greater than all of this, and it's been pretty consistent since the low bubble. So something is changing here. Let's come in on the 20-day, one-hour view. So again, she is hanging around the 200. She's going above it, below it, but really not anything big. She had a blip here yesterday, and today she took off. Everything looks to be pulling down now, but look at that fall. Let's look at that on the five day, five minute. So she's sitting on the 50 day SMA here, not doing anything. Had that blip, not quite sure what that blip was about, but it came down below where it started, way down here. And then today she took off, did all of her gains in the first five minutes. There's your high bubble. First five minutes, she is done, no more to be said. And our 50% mark is about somewhere in there and she's below that but what I notice here is that is that right that's right that is 10 o'clock in the morning right there and then she starts to fall that's my magic exit door 10 in the morning 1005 at the latest if I ever see a giant run just going crazy just like that you can tell it's a super duper surge I am gonna be out by 10 10 05 in the morning because I've noticed on the OTC market, many, many, many stocks at 10, 10, 05 take a dip, and that dip turns into a fall, fast and furious, and your money is taken away. And then if, if you're lucky, you get one of these, a false bounce. It comes up and you say, oh, thank God, thank God, I'm gonna get back into the game. And it just turns around and dwindles away 
all day and you end up losing your money. So I just take my money at 10, 10 05 on a strong run and I don't worry about it. Now, yes, 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 yes. I do look at the charts. If everything looks like fireworks, if the technicals are blazing, sure, I'm going to hang around. But show me one inkling that it is about to pull back, I'm out of there. And I will do that every day and I will be quite fine thank you very much so we had that big gain here she did start to fall she came through her 50 percent gain mark and here's the 200 day sma coming into the picture and here's the 200 haul the haul is just like the 200 day sma except it gives a little more credence to current prices and our price is right between the two pretty average don't see a lot of activity anywhere here except see CCI, our Commodities Channel Index, is showing some strength right now like she is in recovery. This is normally the first indicator before these two start to show. But truly, it looks like she's in a cold spell right now, but this company's got something. It's backed by Apple. I don't see anybody else with this Apple product. It's already built into the phones, CarPlay. So I think they could be onto something, but by golly, we got to start seeing some revenues. So this may be a good time to get in before they start showing how much money they're making and what they're doing. But remember, do your DD. There's a lot more to learn about this company. There was a ton of news we didn't look at. Well, I guess that's a mixed bag of nuts right there. You got Spire, which is dealing with your internet of things backed by Apple, built into their phones. They've been doing a lot of work. When you go look at their news, you will see they've been building up their management. They've been working on this product that they've got. They have spent a lot of time and attention on it. We just need to see some revenues now. Then you've got, what was that other company that began with an S? SNPF, S-N-I-P-F, SNPF. Bailey's is interested in them. I think they're going to do well too. They're working with advertising in a different sort of way that creates loyalty. And now that loyalty is giving them tokens that they convert into betting chips, if you will, for sports betting and casino. I think that'll bring in some new loyalty and their business has been growing. They had 40% more business and hit a new mark of 4.5 million this last quarter. So they've got to be doing at least 15, 16, 20 million dollars a year. So they're not a rinky dink company. And the last one we were looking at, well, VIZC. They've just had a reverse merger. Silent, quiet, hasn't been announced, is not in a news press, is not in a filing. You and a couple of other people know about it. So so when the news press comes out or a filing, ta-da, it's going to jump again. So this is a silent reverse merger that could make us some money, but we don't know a whole lot about it. And that's why due diligence is so important, folks. It can save your ass as well as make you money. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.